Uh, hello, hello, hello. Bet y'all thought I disappeared. What has been going on, subs? Uh, those of you that are interested in seeing what's going on, we are uh, working on a new project, and I really wasn't sure actually if I was going to videotape this one or not. But before I start, let me give you a little backstory to it. Okay, so a couple years ago, my wife and I, we were tooling around uh, downtown Phoenix, killing some time, and we came across this little junk store, and in the junk store was a table lamp. Now, this is a table lamp that I had never seen before in my life. Uh, this thing is uh, from Austria, and uh, it was made in 1910, and it's known as Chunk Jewel. And this is a completely new one for me, and uh, it's very, very unusual, actually, to see pieces like this that are for sale, and usually when you find one that's for sale, uh, they generally cost as much as your car. Uh, this one here certainly cost more than my car. Uh, dumb thing though, the lamp wasn't priced. And I didn't ask the price. My wife and I got into the car and she said, what do you think? I said, I think that lamp's probably eight, $9,000 maybe. And, uh, and we got in the car and left. Well, a few weeks later, I decided, I said, that's it. Call the guy up, see if he's still got the lamp for sale. Uh, it turns out, of course, he didn't. And uh, I was completely floored when I found out how what he basically gave it away for. So, long story short, I've never been able to shake that out of my mind. Uh, the combination of glass and bronze together is, uh, is something very neat, and it's something you don't see today very often. So this project here, which I didn't think actually I was going to film, I decided, you know what, I think I will. Maybe you guys will learn something from it. I know I'm about to learn a whole lot from this because I've never been down this road before. So let me show you kind of what we have in store. And uh, this is uh, my first shot at uh, working with glass. So you're going to see a little bit of glass work on this one. You're going to see some clay work, uh, a little bit of modeling, and uh, of course obviously some bronze work. Uh, maybe I'll show a little bit of the patina work, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how far we go with this. But I want to show you basically what I want to make. Uh, so here, let's take a peek at that. This is basically what I want to try to make. Now, I drew this uh, recently uh, while I was gone, and something I had been kind of thinking of. One of the things with Art Nouveau styling is it's it's kind of very uh, uh, Jules Verne-ish almost. Uh, the way that uh, a lot of stuff, shapes and things might actually be a throwback to the science fiction age, I guess. Uh, I think 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now what we're looking at here is this is going to be a shade, uh, the bronze shade, and all those tiny little cutouts are gonna be different chunks of colored glass inlaid into the bronze. And uh, it is going to be sitting on something that Hopefully, if I can make it stick and pull it off, it's going to look like a tree. So that's where we're at. Uh, Here we can see a picture of the shade that I have been working on. Sorry I didn't film any of this stuff, but uh, what I made was a wooden buck to try to cut down on the use of clay. And, uh, and then I started building up clay on top of it and uh, eventually walled it in. Here uh, it has some uh, pictures of some walls on it and uh, slathered the entire thing in uh, as much Vaseline as I could tolerate. Filled it up full of plaster, knocked the walls off after it dried, and there you go. You now you're looking at the largest lump of plaster of Paris you've ever seen. Well, I thought we had a small crisis here. I'd go ahead and take the take the uh, plaster off of the the top of the mold here, and well, it went with it. Uh, dug out the clay, and fortunately, we do have a good mold. Now you ask yourself, what is this thing for? Well, I'm going to take this large. 50 pound block of plaster I'm going to completely soak it in water and I'll slosh wax in and wax out of wax and we'll do this four or five times until we've built up a nice uh, you know, quarter inch layer of wax which we can then pull out of the mold and uh, turn that into a shade with some final finishing not sure yet how the glass is going to work uh, if it's uh, make the glass pieces first or cut the holes first kind of think it might be better to do the glass now let's take a peek at uh, the present work on the tree uh, now you all know that I am not, you all know that I am certainly not the best sculptor out there. I am far from it. So any advice you have to make a tree, please, down below, tell me. Um, I'm going to try my best with this. I know trees need to be kind of natural shape, but uh, we look at the, uh, the sample and then uh, I'll see if I put the tree around here. And uh, we can see, I believe I'm off to a fairly decent start. Now underneath this piece of plywood, there's a, a block of lumber and then uh, this uh, piece of uh, scrap uh, birch plywood I took and I notched I notched this out to give the clay something to take it a bite to and of course there's a screw that travels all the way uh, from the bottom of this and rolls right up into the top so 
let's see what happens with uh, the tree here. So we've got a few different things going on. We've got the shade, we've got the tree, and then of course we have the glass. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have ever done any glass work before, but it certainly can't be as hard as melting bronze and making stuff out of bronze. This was my first shot at uh, messing with glass, and I was kind of surprised. It uh, Seemed to kind of shape and do whatever I wanted to. Uh, it's now stuck on a stainless steel uh, TIG rod here, but well, we'll get it. Take a moment here and shift gears. Uh, I want to show you a couple of things that happened recently. Fritz Hoppy was in Dallas for the Safari show. And uh, here is some small video. Uh, those of you that don't like dead animals on a stick, this is probably a good time to say, we'll see you later next time. But uh, the uh, Safari convention, Dallas Safari convention was an excellent show. Fritz was able to show a lot of his bronze work. Uh, a lot of bronze sellers were there. I don't know how much of this stuff was selling, uh, but uh, Fritz had a wonderful, wonderful display. Got a chance to meet him and his girlfriend and his parents. They're all, yeah, the entire family is extremely talented. If somebody tells you that this isn't genetics, they're wrong. Uh, his brother did this piece right here with the two lions uh, trying to kill each other. Amazing piece. I would be very, very proud to have that in my house. Anybody would be. Uh, that entire family is extremely gifted. So uh, kick back, uh, watch a couple shots from the uh, Dallas Safari Show. Watch, don't forget to watch his channel, and you'll probably see a small little spot there where I took and uh, he asked him a couple questions, and we just kind of basically said hello to everybody. And uh, all righty, well, there you go. Thanks, guys. We'll see you guys again soon.